Alright, so let's move on to solving the challenge. Now, if you notice, when I explained the problem, I was hinting at a particular solution that some of you may have used in solving the problem. I talked about the ancestors of 6, 5, and 7, and the ancestors of 8, 5, 7, 8, uh, 5, 7, and 10, and then I said that the common ones were 5 and 7, and the lowest one was 7. Now, you could have implemented that. That's basically an algorithm, a mechanism to solving this problem. You could have said, you know what I'm going to do? I will look for the ancestors of 6 in that binary search tree, store them in a list. So you're going to store 5 and 7 in the order that you meet them, 5 then 7 in that list. And then you're going to store the ancestors of 8, 5, 7, and 10 in another list. So you'll have the ancestors of 6 in one list, the ancestors of 8 in another list. And then you'll compare these two lists and find where they diverge. In this case, you have 5 and 7, and here you'll have 5, 7, and 10. You notice that 7 is the point, the last common point that they have together. After 7, in this case, it becomes empty. You find your number. In the other case, you have a 10, so you declare this as your lowest common ancestor. This is a, a possible implementation which will solve the problem. Now, there's a better way of doing it. We're dealing with a binary search tree, and we've already seen the lookup method of a binary search tree, and we know how it operates. If we were looking for 6, for example, in that binary search tree, and we were to, to use the traditional find method. The find method, this is how it would work. It would compare 6 to 5. Since 6 is larger than 5, it goes to the right. It eliminates everything to the left. This we don't care about anymore. We look at the right part now. And then since 6 is less than 7, we're going to go right here to the left. Since 6 is less, we go to the left, and then we find our 6. Do the same thing for 8. If you, when you're trying to look up 8 in that binary search tree, you compare 8 to 5. 8 is larger than 5, go to the right. 8 is larger than 7, go to the right. 8 is left than, less than 10, therefore you go to the left. And then you compare it right here and you find that this is your 8. Now, what are we doing in those lookup methods? What we're essentially doing, when we looked up 6, we stepped over every single one of its ancestors. We stepped over 5, 7, and then we got to 6. When we're looking for 8, we were stepping over its ancestors too. We stepped over 5, 7, and then 10, and then we got to 8. Now, why don't we combine the lookup methods for these two integers into one method so that we look for these two integers at once? So let's look for 6 and 8 together at the same time in a hypothetical method that we would have implemented. So we compare 6 and 8 to 5. 6 and 8 are both larger than 5, so we go to the right. 6 and 8 at this point, when you compare 6 and 8 to 7, you notice that 6 is less than 7, but 8 is larger than 7. So this is a diverging point. And right there you stop, and you declare this as your lowest common ancestor. So what we essentially did is we leveraged the, the lookup method. We used it, we exploited it in our solution by simply making a small modification by introducing the lookup of two numbers. We are looking for two numbers, and the moment they diverge, in their direction, one goes left, the other goes right, then we know this is the lowest common ancestor because now 8 is just going to go within that subbranch and the 6 will go in that subbranch. So we declare this as our lowest common ancestor. This is the algorithm we're going to be using here because of its simplicity and efficiency. So let's do it. Let's implement it. Now, first, the method signature, call it uh, lowest find lowest common ancestor and it needs to return a node of course that's the lowest common ancestor it's being passed the root node also and two values value one and value two that's according to the problem now what do we do first in a lookup method of a binary search tree just make sure that your root is not null so you're not being passed a null tree or an empty tree return null in case it is empty and next, just use your logic, the logic that we looked at. So you're going to compare v1 and v2 to the key contained in root. If they are both larger or both less than the key here, then we move right or left. Otherwise, we declare this to be the lowest common ancestor. So let's do that. If v1 is larger than root.key and v2 is larger than root.key, if they both are larger, then we move to the right. So return, find, LCA, call the same function once more, but this time on the right. So root.write, v1, v2. Now, if they are both less, so v1 is less than root.key, and v2 is less than root.key, then we will call that same method once more, but this time on the left subtree. So the same logic will be applied on the left subtree. What if they diverge? What if one goes right and the other goes left? This is our else case, and what we're going to do is just return that root node. This is the lowest common ancestor, and there we have it.